right so now i'm following on from the last vlog uh jeremiah is a bit more settled i've never felt bad or anything but of course i had a camera which was hurting me more and then there was so much drama going on it rained with the cascaded we couldn't get to our house the doctor had to drop us to go to um our house so at the moment um i'm gonna put um the clips over that i had recorded because i had i couldn't record consistently but i kept recording little bits which i've now put together so um i'm waiting jeremiah's ward where jeremiah is sleeping um but this time i'm exhausted but i'm feeling exhausted because i'm thinking oh, i've been working so hard We've moved houses um, and uh, we, today I had a meeting, I didn't sleep well, so I'm putting the exhaustion down to all that. And the doctor called me in, in, the, in his office, and they called me Mama JJ. Uh, so they said, Mama JJ, come. So I went to the doctor's office and he told me, because, oh, you know, Mama JJ, he was very gentle, um, you have no malaria. I'm like, oh, I was surprised. So when the doctor said I had no malaria, I was like, okay. We ha I haven't suffered any malaria since uh, I moved to the UK and I've been coming to visitations even when we were here for the longest period uh, for almost six months. For six months, we didn't have any malaria during the COVID periods. So I'm like, okay. But however, I was surprised that Jeremiah had malaria. So I wondered if I had titrated, I started my titration with him a bit early. Uh, nonetheless, it's, it, you know, it's a system I have used before and it had worked. Anyhow, so he said, you have no malaria, mm. but you've got such high typhoid uh, in your body. It is so high. And he goes, I said, how high? Because it's really, really high. So the surprise was the level of typhoid I had in my, in my system was meant to have, in a, in a way, put me down with high temperature, A, B, C, D, Z. Because I don't know why, but it's really high. So I said, okay, what's the, what's the course of treatment now? He goes, you have, sat, you have to have a kind of protein and you sat on a dose of, on, on, a treat, on, a, on a treatment. I'm like, no problem. So I went in and I told my brother, I said, you know what? Uh, I've been told that uh, this is the level of, my, of typhoid I have in my body. He goes, huh, I'm much older than him. So he goes, oh, auntie, you must be strong. You have that level of typhoid and you're still walking. And I said, hmm. I said, you know what? Maybe it's the, it's, it's the herbs I've been taking. Because since I've been coming, since I, since I arrived, uh, I think a day or so after arriving, I was in, I was in so much pain. I'm sweating. I was in so much pain uh, from my hip pain. It was like a hip groin hip groin pain, and um, my sister gave me uh, a herb to drink. It's called um, umharavumba in my language, over umururuza in Luganda. So she gave me the herb to drink, and. Uh, she was trying it because she, you know she said you know you never know i gave it to mom and my auntie healed mom within within an hour so when she gave it to me she said try before we got the to the hospital the pain i was having i was limping and i could hardly walk so after i took the herb it was i took uh about 750 mils it was uh, like the the normal 500 mil water bottle and a bit in the glass. After taking that, within an hour, the pain had gone. When I say gone, I could walk, I wasn't sleeping. So she confirmed to me that when she had given it to mom, same thing had happened. Within an hour, she had, you know, she had really, really bad stitch in her belly. Within an hour, she got up, she had a bath, she was walking up and down and working. So she gave me the herb and it eased. And um, 
she stays on uh, on herbs and everything. So she, she there's a doctor she works she 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 works with, uh, who um who who gives her some herbs. So when she was going to see this doctor, I went with her because I had had um uh, uh, I had had a treatment as well just before leaving UK. So I went with her to this doctor. And now I'm digressing to where I'm going to be telling you about the levels of typhoid in my body now. So when I went with her to this doctor, uh, I told him about the pain, migraine pain and, and the hip pain. And he said, and I told him about when I took the Muhara of Mumba, that, the, that, it had, that the pain had eased. The only issue is I don't remember. Uh, I'll ask the doctor actually what the name is in English, and I'll put it. I'll put it here. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll ask the, that doctor the name for Muharavumba in English. Um, so anyway, when I told him about that, he goes, "Yeah, I, I can see that herb doing that, clearing the pain." And of course, and I had had other pains. The other pains I had had were to do with my headaches. I had headaches here. Um, and I, I kept putting them down to stress. That is honestly what it was, that I was putting them to stress. And I had a jaw pain, which was so bad that I ended up in hospital with so much suspect or sus suspecting this, suspecting that, you know, life-threatening illnesses. Um, one of the reasons that I had to leave UK. Anyhow. So when I told him that, and I told him that even when I came, I had some other, other niggling pains in my ankles, in my legs. I would have throbbing pains in my legs. I'm like, oh my goodness me, is this anything? Is there, you know, is there a clot? But everything went. He goes, yeah, I can see that happening. So I said, and then of course I told him about my diagnosis just before coming to you, to you, to to, to, to Uganda, and he told me, couldn't you take that Maharavumba for three months? And then after that, come for a review. I'm like, okay, no problem. Um, so it's you know, it, you, it's a leaf which is plucked from a from from a, we just pluck leaves from a tree, that particular tree, wash them well, they are blended, sieved, and you drink. Natural, so much green and chlorophyll. Natural. So, because I had been taking that for a long while, my brother thought. And I thought as well, actually, that that is the reason maybe that the, the that my though my, my though my typhoid levels were high, they are not affecting me. So I left it to that. As I record this now, I've gone to see the doctor again because um, I had it when it, where where we've moved to. Can you believe how sad it is? There's no that tree is not there. This area, we have a little bit. We have some. We have some rice fields around and some bushes, but there's, the trees are not there, which is such a shame, you know, because I think people used to use it a lot. So I went to the to that uh, to that doctor again, uh, and by the way, he's a re really well-known doctor. Uh, so I went to him again uh, recently, and I told him that I, I gave him the <laughs> and the. I narrated the story about my levels of typhoid and everything and uh, how they couldn't find you no know, with the level of typhoid they thought I would have been re I would be really unwell he goes no we've done a research and we found that people who are on such herbs though they may have the level of typhoid in them it will not affect them um, and then eventually they become immune to it I'm like okay so probably that's what that is what was happening anyhow um, we are started on treatment from, uh, from that time, mine was at one o'clock. So we had to go in again at one o'clock to get another dose. So it had to be every 12 hours, but more so for Jeremiah. Uh, so that was on a Tuesday, but so we waited. He had his, he had his, uh, his last dose had to be at seven in the evening. So when he had his last dose, we then had to come back home and we came home. That was on the Tuesday night. We were meant to go back 1 a.m. for him to get another dose, so that would make it 12 hours. But by about 10 o'clock, it started threatening to rain. Uh, and then uh, 
By the time we went to bed, about 11 o'clockish, it has started drizzling and I'm like, there's no way we can make it because once it rains where we are, the car doesn't come to our house. <laughs> Village life. <laughs> so, we would have opted for walking at night to go where the car can reach. I wasn't comfortable with that. Um, there's still a bush around our area, and rice fields, and I'm like, okay. And I'm like, no, let's not do that. Let's first wake up, let's wake up at six in the morning and go. Uh, mid of the night, Jeremy, I got another temperature. I gave him cowpaw. Uh, so this put him to sleep again. He really went off to sleep. Because he had been again, you know, hallucinating and screaming. So at six, he didn't wake up. I said, okay, let me give him one more hour. So I didn't wake him up until seven, seven thirty, and we got our way to go. But the car couldn't reach our house, so we had to walk. Uh, so my brother carried him, and we walked slowly to where the car was. It's just like a slight hill. We have to go up a slight hill. So yeah, so we found the car there, and we went to hospital. Uh, when we got there, they were like, why didn't you come at one o'clock? I'm like, it was raining. I explained to them. They said, next time you should ring. I tried to ring, but the phone couldn't go through. And I'm like, you know, just, let's just leave it. But in any case, I don't see how they would have, maybe they would have, yeah, they would have walked down probably with the medication. I don't know. So they told me because we missed the one o'clock doors with malaria, this type of malaria, they have got to restart the doors. It has to be given every 12 hours on the dot. So we had to do nine o'clock, stay in the whole day, do another one at nine o'clock, and make sure we're back before nine o'clock for him to have his last dose. There are three at 9 a.m. So we had the 9 a.m. one, and I had mine, and we stayed in the hospital. So he had 9 a.m. We, ha we had 9 a.m., him, his malaria, but me, because my level was high, I was having, I think, every six hours. So I had nine and I think, so three times a day, mine. Him as well three times a day because he was being treated for the typhoid, malaria, and the other, and the other, um, and the other infection. So as well, bless him, he had it three times a day. So we stayed, we, we stayed in the hospital for the whole day. Uh, and my brother brought us lunch. Uh, and as he was bringing us lunch, I asked him, I said, oh, so how did you manage with the car? Because I left the car where he had picked us from, went down and brought, uh, brought your lunch. I'm like, okay. So he, I said, okay. So after lunch, I said, you know, you can then come and pick us up after nine. There's no need for you to stay here in the hospital with us. You just go home. He goes, all right. At about six o'clock, he rings me. And I'm like, oh, hi, is everything okay? He goes, you know what? Um, We've had an issue with the car. And I'm like, how do you mean? He goes, um, the car has skidded. And I'm like, how? He goes, from the point where the car was, I tried to, it started, it started raining again. So I tried to go and move the car from where it was to take it to, um, to a higher level, which is more safer. And I couldn't, and I skidded back, and I ended up in the, in the, in the maize fields. And I'm like, are you okay? He goes, yes, I'm fine. I managed to stop it in time, but it's just stuck, it can't move. And guess what? It's raining, so there's nothing she can do. And it's about, I think, oh God, maybe between five and six. I really can't remember times, but it was just coming to evening. So I said, okay, let's wait and I'll see what we can do. So I waited and um, the doctor wasn't there. And what I did, I said, I rang him, I said, uh, is there any way you can uh, get us some transport to take us home after our 9 p.m. doors? Um, because the car that my brother's car has, um, has skidded it, you know, it, uh, we're able to, he's unable to pick us up. He goes, okay, I'll let you know. But it had rained the whole day. So everything, by the time we had our, our medication and everything, it was coming to about 10 o'clock. And the doctor waited and I was like, he goes like, I'm going to take you. I'm like, to our house. He goes, yes. I'm like, oh my goodness me. How lovely, how sweet. 
and he drove us. He's got a beautiful car. Whoa. Beautiful. So he drove us to our house, but not to the house, to near the house, because I said, you can't go there. His car is strong. It, I think the, my brother said he could drive there. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not risking it. But in any case, he couldn't have gone to the car because, to the house, because our car was stuck in the middle of the road towards our house. So our brother met, my brother met us with, uh, with our boots and we walked down, down the hill to our house. Jeremiah is much better this time. The temperature has gone, actually literally gone. And me, I have never felt any, anything. The only thing, the only pain I had was the cannula site. It was really, really painful for some reason. I don't know. Oh, I know why. It was so painful because they told me that my veins are really tiny. And my brother said, you have got to start walking. And so I'm going to be going on a walking spree again. I used to do it just before Jeremiah was born. I really don't know why I stopped. That's the honest truth. I don't know why I stopped. So we walked down and came home. In the morning, because I knew we couldn't get the car moved, again, it was raining the whole night, we had to get a border. My brother escorted us to the hospital, left us there, and then he went. We stayed there for the 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. doors and the 1 p.m. doors. Then we were getting ourselves ready to go home. When, and I knew I was going to use the same border guy to take us home because he's slow, he doesn't, he doesn't speed. You know, the, because border accidents here are so horrendous. They're so bad because they are speeding, it's so busy. But at least here, it's a, it's a village. And so there are no many borders. There are not many cars, not many people, so it's easier to maneuver on the border. And he knows to go slow because I really hold him tight. <laughs> so he, he was okay to come and pick us up. Ah, so what happened? Uh, we, we waited. And as I was there at about maybe 12 o'clock, my brother said, oh, I'm coming to pick you up. I've moved the car. I said, how did you move it? He managed to move the car. And if I can show you where the car was and how it skidded. I, I forgot to take a picture when we came in the night and when we left in the morning. When we came in the night, we went through the back, back, the, the, the back way, so we didn't see it. But we saw it in the morning and I forgot to take a picture because I, I don't know why I should have taken a picture of where the car was, I forgot. But at least now you can see where the car landed. And from where it came from, you can see it now. So yeah, so he managed to move the car and come and pick us up. Um, and this is us walking down the hill to the house after he picked us up. Ah, what a day. It's raining. We are coming from... Uh, hospital we've got a bit when we had a bit of malaria and some typhoid but it was caught right in time because God is good um, but this is our road look at that that's our road this is our road we cannot use the car so we are in boots. We are in boots. There he is. Going home. Going home. This is our veg life. Now this is where our car reversed to and it ended up here and i'll show you how it reversed from where it came all the way from there reversing reversing it, you know it couldn't stop came there 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 and it just ended here so this is us going home There we are.
<laughs> way, way home. <laughs> Can only get there with boats. <laughs> ah, that's rice. They have rice fields here. And I don't know if you can see somebody there. They are. They look after the rice to make sure that the birds don't eat them. Yes, come, JJ, move. Look. That is what he's looking at. Don't get too close. <laughs> they bite. Stop. No, these don't bite. I don't know how you can call the name of these ones here. In my language, they are called Ibisa Munyu. Look. Ibisa Munyu. Look. Remains of a sugar cane. <coughs> That's home there. As we approach, those are neighbors' houses. There we are. The noise you hear is them trying to frighten birds away. Yeah. You hear that? This is from 7 until about 5.36 o'clock when the birds stop coming. Somebody they're planting maize. Maize is called sweet wheat. No, they refer to it as sweet corn. Um, I think within the UK maybe and other American European countries. Yeah, it's called maize. Yeah, there we are. We are approaching home. Okay. Thank you for being with us. We'll finish our vlog when we get in the house. Bye -bye. Hi guys, this vlog has taken a week uh, because we've been up and down in the hospital. This is the, the same road of ours, which is now clear, clear of rain. Look at the difference. Yesterday was up there so muddy, but look at the difference now. Uh, remember where we came from? Tire, uh, tire marks are now dry. Dry. Still there. Oh my goodness me. Yeah. And actually went through there. I don't know how he managed to go through there. You can see. He went through there a bit. These are beans. These are beans. So these ones here. We'll end up like this before they put on their pods. So yes, so guys, this is it. This is it. Let us walk down back to home. But let me also show you how dry the place is and the difference. When it's dry, it's quite beautiful. The view is lovely. The road isn't, but the view is beautiful. So pretty. Look, there's the corn, the maize, as we call it in Uganda. Ah, that's where it ended. Thank God for masses. However, this is still uh, muddy. So, going back home, just come from the GPs, well, not the GP, just come from the um, clinic and having my last dose and I'm walking back home. And this is home. There it is, you can see. There, there's home. Okay then, there's my cannula. Mine hasn't stopped yet. Mm, let me show you my cannula. 
Here's my canura. There. One more dose I have. And that's it. I'm done for the for the treatment. I thank God. I haven't felt low, I haven't felt bad. Okay. I'll finish the vlog at a later time. Take care. Bye for now. Now, this is the way to our home. No, this is the way from our home on a sunny day. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Yeah. But this area, yeah. so our home is right down there, almost towards the bottom of the hill. There we are. Neighbors, shops, I presume they need to be rented, and eventually this place will be very busy. I tell you, it won't be like this, it won't be recognizable. So, buildings are coming up. Mom, you all are lovely, God. You can hear how breathless I am. <laughs> it's a hill. We, we are going to go to the hospital, back to the clinic, uh, to have Jeremiah uh, have his medication. Mandy. Okay, so Jeremiah has now had his. Uh, Four dose dozen of treatment and he's okay. We are due to go back on a on a on, on a on a review, and I have as well. The only thing that uh, um, I found that I knew about it was the cost of care. Of course, for so many years, the beauty of the UK is um, when one is unwell. Healthcare is free. Uh, it may take a while sometimes to get the help, the, the, the help you need, but it is free. Uh, if it's an emergency, it will be quick, of course. Or not, of course, but it will be slightly quicker than the normal. Um, so the difference is that when I went to the GP here, the doctors, I was seen straight away. I just walked in, I was seen straight away almost it's not almost like an emergency system of the UK because we've been with the system of the UK emergency wait. Uh, unless an ambulance may, maybe brings you in, but I was sent straight away, which is a good thing. Um, I had to pay. <laughs> and I asked them, I said, how much am I going to pay from the onset? They said, oh, we have to treat and let you know. Um, and at the end of it, it was uh, very expensive. Um, it was a private clinic, so they make money. Uh, and I know that uh, when I talked to other people, they said that, oh, it was like so expensive. Having said that, the clinic that I was going to go to, which is over an hour, an hour away, would have been four times the cost. So this was expensive. And for the area that was in, it is... It was about 10 times more uh, that, that, that they cost us. And I told them I didn't have the money, which I didn't have. Um, so I gave them the money that I thought, which I had on me, which I thought was going to cost me because of the area I was in. And, um, and I still owe them. They were happy for me to owe them, and I paid them slowly. So I'm going to wait. When I get the money, I just pay them slowly. They have continued to treat Jeremiah and I. We are... They gave us the medication because we had to go the, to take the the cannula ones and then the tablets. And then yeah, that was it. Um, the experience was good. The nurses were good. They were, they were gentle. Um, the doctor was nice. The place was okay. It was good. So I really I couldn't fault them in that case. Um, the only thing that I could I would have. I would have preferred to know was to know the cost from the beginning. So 
I didn't like that they couldn't tell me the course from the beginning. That I didn't like. And uh, that's the only, that's only you know, thing that I don't like. And of course, when, they, when the bill came, it was 10 times more than I had thought. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do with that in future. Uh, I just pray that I don't have to go through that again. Yeah, so I'm wondering where we could have got the typhoid from because... I was being as, as careful as I can. And we, within the household, it was only Jeremiah and I who got unwell. Others didn't. But I think, you know, sometimes when I would be doing some measures, some people would be telling, oh, she's showing off. I know, I know some people are saying that, I know. So when we, get, when we came unwell, I said, there we are. Thankfully, it was not life-threatening to say that we are really, really, but, you know, for Jeremiah it was, but not for me. But I said, now you know. So, at least now within the house, you know, what I was doing is what is now the norm. For example, for us, you know, after washing our dishes, we are using boiled water to, to clean off the, the, the plate, the spoon, the cup. Um, if I have to wipe anything, it is a... I'm trying to use a, a, a tissue, and if it's a, if it's a cloth, it's one cloth, you wipe and you put it, but I try not to wipe my things. Um, and if it's nece necessary that I wipe, I do the back, not the, the, the front, but uh, yeah. Uh, eating out, I try to wipe everything if I have to eat out, and really we haven't had eating out. It is very expensive to eat out here, well, for me. Disclaimer for me. It is very expensive for me to eat out here disclaimer it is just for me it is expensive other people may be but for me it's expensive to eat out so we haven't eat out, eaten out a lot and actually i'm happy i haven't eaten out a lot because i like my home food i know how it's cooked i know who has cooked it i'm not going to be thinking all oh, this or that so i'm really happy with that um we are well jj is back to school he's doing well um, he loves his football. He's got, you know, he's got a lovely teacher who's put him into his football. Um, and yes, and so that has been uh, our week, which had started, and then, yeah, and more. But yeah, that has been our week so far. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation, this chat. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, kindly, kindly, kindly give it a thumbs up. Uh, like, share, comment, and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. God bless. Thank you for listening. Take care, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.